Hello everyone and welcome to episode 27 of SSTO Space Program and today we will finish establishing a full trade route between Kerbin and Daman. And not only that, but we will also send a much requested bug lander first into orbit and then to Daman. And also we will send another base piece that will help us achieve full sustainability on the Daman's surface. So let's jump right into it. So, as usual in this type of situations, we will use our trusty OCOD2 SSTO launch vehicle to send the bug lander into orbit. The bug itself is not very heavy, so um, it's way below the mass limit that this SSTO can carry into orbit, because it weighs only about 160 tons when empty, and we are sending it empty, although equipped with two, two containers that we'll use um, later on to transport different types of goods from uh, the surface of the man into our cargo station that we sent previously. I am actually quite excited about this because the bug is not only very pretty, it is also a much requested vehicle that hasn't been used very much in this series or well at all actually and um, now now there is a reason to use it and um, well it actually was kind of difficult to fit it before this point in time and now now we actually need it. Since it was designed as um, maybe not exactly a space freighter, because as you remember, it was submitted for um, our freighters uh, competition or contest. Um, it is a very well designed, pretty and dedicated man lambda. And um, right now we are at the point where we need to expand our man station a little bit and make it sustainable, so to speak, at least in terms of supplies production. Uh, we have sent our, uh, well not yet, but we will send in this episode later on uh, our flame leviathan full of machinery and some other goodies that uh, I filled in when you were not looking. And the only thing that we are missing currently, apart from multiple extra modules and uh, things in our space, uh, sorry, space station, no, uh, our surface uh, outpost on the man is a dedicated lander. And uh, the bug fits that role perfectly. As you know, it can carry about 130 to 160 tons of payload from Kerbin to the Man and land on the surface of the Man even. So um, we'll have enough fuel to actually get there empty and land once um, the need arises. As you can see, I equipped this bug with um, two containers fitted for machinery that can be undocked and um, transported or directly attached to a space station if need be. But there is also one big mistake that they did when uh, attaching this, this particular bag to our OCOD2 vehicle that you will see in a second and that um, unfortunately <laughs> this is something that we'll need to take care of a little bit later and uh, while we are executing our transfer burn to the man you will see uh, when we will be leaving the, 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 the planet that there is a very ugly sticking docking port on the front side of our spacecraft that is actually oriented in the wrong direction. And um, that is not limiting its functionality, but it's ugly and we'll have to remove it using an engineer. Right now, when bug is in the transfer, we move on to the next step of a next step in our mission, the thing that we want to do today, and that is obviously sending Flame Leviathan that we've equipped uh, with all the uh, necessary containers, and we filled those containers a bit in the previous episode and a little bit when you were not looking with machinery and some extra material kits. This Flame Leviathan, as you might remember, is able to carry more than 1,000, actually 2,000 tons to the man and back. We are carrying about 1,000 tons and we are sending it on its first maiden voyage to the man, delivering 1000 tons of machinery. Actually, it's more than we need to refill on most of our surface bases in the vicinity and definitely on our, all our space stations, but, you know, at least we'll have something to, to use. Our first destination is obviously uh, our Munar space uh, station, the cargo space station that we've put around the man and we will refill all the containers there and the every module that needs and uses machinery with machinery coming from that space freighter. Now, I'm pretty sure that you are asking yourself right now why the hell I am showing you the landing footage from OCOD2 launch vehicle because we've landed this vehicle so many times before that clearly that's something that uh, everyone knows how to do and uh, probably you might be even thinking that I ran out of ideas what to show you, that's why I'm sh showing you some generic landing footage and you, my friend, are wrong, because I am showing you this because I have heard some disgruntled and disbelieving voices that this vehicle cannot be 
landed in this version of KSP and moreover it's not able to re-enter on this loan. That's why I'm showing you how to re-enter this vehicle, how it is done. As you can see it's not very easy, I mean it's still possible but uh, it kind of requires uh, a little bit more experience because um, we are using those big airplane wings and those tend to overheat and um, explode due to uh, overheating and to prove it to you that this has been done on a normal settings I will show you also in the options menu that re-entry heating is in fact set to 100% there is nothing changed from a normal KSP standard KSP settings that you would be using and yes this vehicle can be landed can be re-entered it's just not so straightforward as you might have imagined but yes it can be done so with the disbeliever silenced for eternity or at least for some time we can move to another step in our amazing space program which is sending another base piece to the moon and uh, as you know if you are following this series that is and i really do hope that you are and if you're not then you should totally do it we've been experimenting a lot with different base designs and uh, had run into a couple of problems like those MKS bases really need to be huge to be actually functional and um, we've been trying to circumvent the problem and make those bases manageable without um, actually you, you know we wanted to make them useful without having them be so large and big and so heavy on part count that KSP would not grind itself to a halt and I think that we are on the right track on how we want to do that and in my opinion, we've already made some progress into that direction, the idea or the solution lies into utilizing the logistics system to its full potential. So we already have the remote mining stations that are putting resources to the planetary logistics system. Therefore, um, they are remote. They do not count to the part count of the large bases that use those resources to process them and create more important goods. But the uh, problem that we run into on uh, Duna with our base on Duna was that when I tried to connect too many different separate domes together, that created one large vessel and uh, vessels in KSP are somewhat rigid especially when they are loading and uh, that, that created all sorts of problems with some parts ending up being under the ground and therefore you know you, you can you can imagine the rest so the idea is that uh, MKS also has this local logistics system that allow you to transfer resources between neighboring vessels so what we will try to do here is um, send a um, somewhat smaller not fully sustainable not fully like self-sufficient base but the base that we will land next to our Munar outpost alpha very cool name i'm really proud of it uh, that will pull minerals from the remote mining station that is putting those minerals into the planetary logistics system and uh, convert them into fertilizer and with that fertilizer being manufactured in situ on the surface of the man and very close to our main base we will make that base fully uh, sustainable in terms of supplies productions but in the meantime as you probably noticed because you are a very keen observer our space freighter flame leviathan has arrived to the man and now it's turn for the bug um, actually the reason why those uh, two arrived on the you know kind of on the inverse order is because I messed up the transfer burn for the flame leviathan that ended up to to be larger than needed and therefore it got the first so you know there is a not that thing that i messed there's many more and the one <laughs> one is currently on the screen i completely forgot that uh what we needed to to do is uh, refill <laughs> machinery on the space station not on the on the base so for some reason i was completely convinced that i need to dock the the bug to our space freighter transport some machinery to the to the bug and land it and refill our surface out outpost with machinery but um at the point when i started transferring machinery i kind of realized that that was not the goal and uh, in fact what i needed the lander for is basically to transport material kits in case we wanted to build something on the surface using uh, ground construction but um yeah when i realized that i you know transferred the machinery back and uh, move the bag away and then I proceeded to what we actually needed to do which was docking the uh, space freighter to our Munar space station so to do that I had to have an encounter with the space station obviously that required some extra maneuvers and uh, you know that was not exceptionally difficult because as you know Flame Leviathan has a lot of Delta V but then the fun started because you know 
Um, docking two large vessels is never easy in KSP, and uh, you already told me multiple times how you completely hate uh, the way I dock my vessels, and uh, the lack of alignment is killing the large portion of my audience. I'm pretty, pretty aware of that. So I just couldn't resist the urge to show you how those two vessels were docked because Flame Leviathan, you know, on its own, it's where it, it weighs about 500, 600 tons, maybe it was carrying 1000 tons of cargo. Um, the space station itself is not exceptionally light either. So docking those two vessels was, you know, wasn't very easy, but I managed to do it with enough patience and about 40 minutes of uh, me just watching at the reticle, trying to align them properly. Um, just a tip that uh, helped me a lot, and I'm sure that most of you are already familiar with it. If you press caps lock, then you're into the uh, precise mode of using your RCS thrusters and everything else. So that is helping a lot. But once Freighter was docked to our space station, you must admit that it looks epic. It looks really cool. and. Um, you know, I, from the beginning of the series, this is what I was hoping for. So, uh, you know, long story short, we transferred all the machinery that we could, obviously, because the space freighter has massive capacity, um, to the space station, refilling it completely. And uh, now, the last thing that we want to do today is land our uh, missing base piece on the surface of the moon. And um, I overdone the transfer stage and the lander stage for... Um, for, um, for the space, uh, up to the point where actually, you know, I decided that we are not going to detach our transfer stage because we still have, we still had plenty of fuel left. And um, also the reason was that, uh, you know, with the KISS, uh, I think it's KISS that allows for that, uh, we can disassemble extra parts that we don't need and uh, recover some material kits that otherwise we would need to transfer from Kerbin. So, it was actually more beneficial if we had enough fuel to land everything on the surface of the moon and, uh, you know, recover all those extra pieces in material kits that we'll later use for uh, for building whatever we would need to build. Funny thing about this is once we landed, I realized that this transfer stage plus lander stage kind of looked like a giant squid. So, you know, you can say that this, this, this base piece was landed by a space octopus or squid. Still. As you can see, after we landed, we've deployed all the modules, so we have inflatable storage and uh, habitation modules, and uh, then, then our clumsy Kerbal, uh, I think it was called Edgun, I don't know, it sounds clumsy even. Uh, so Edgun um, went out and uh, disassembled all the tanks and engines from both the transfer and the lander stage, and as you can see, we were getting some nice amount of material kits. Maybe not enough to build something complex as this on the surface of the moon, but still, you know, whatever we can recover is something that we don't need to carry over from Kerbin. And, uh, you know, technically you could make material kits in situ, but that requires a full production change, which is which is pretty difficult and, uh, and long, and we're, we're really far away from that point. But the base is now established and it's very close to our main outpost, uh, about 40 meters away. And as you can see, uh, habitation-wise and supplies-wise, our Kerbals are pretty well set there, uh, with the pilots being there for an indefinite period of time and the engineers for over 20 years, which is great. And uh, in the um, colony inventory, which is something that I have discovered quite recently, I must admit, to um, the shame's on me. I uh, haven't been looking <laughs> probably enough. Uh, we can see that uh, everything is working fine in terms that uh, m the minerals are consumed on a much slower rate than they are produced, which is great, which means that we can still have, you know, room to improve our throughput, I would say. But most important thing that happened is that nothing is overheating. And as you know, we had some major heating issues in previous episode. But right now, as you can see, everything seems to be fine. Nothing is overheating. Fertilizer is being produced faster than it's being used, so our colony, we can say, is at this point self-sufficient in terms of supplies. So, thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of SSTO Space Program, and if you did, please consider liking this video, and if you haven't watched any of previous episodes, do consider watching all of them, and um, if you like this type of content, or space content in general, 
please consider subscribing to my channel. I would also like to thank Cholof and Shirax and all my amazing patrons on Patreon that keep supporting me and I can tell you that your support is very important and means a lot to me. If you would like to become a patron and support my channel, the link is in the description. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Mark Frem and I will see you next time.